Lady, Catherine and Jimmy, welcome. Hi, you guys. Hey Hello, you. don't forget if you have questions, to sit your hand up. But They're the so few, Catherine, but the you mighty. have done an incredible body of work from Hocus Pocus, Sister Act, Peggy Hill. What kind of drives you? What kind of makes you want to do all of these fantastic things that you do? I think, uh, especially now at this point in my career and my age, <laughs> I look for projects that are something I've never done before. Yeah. Like, so when I got the King of the Hill gig, I had never done a cartoon. Mm. So, and I wanted to do that, so I did that. And um, I really wanted to do Broadway, so I did that. So I just sort of move along, see what's offered to me and see what's interesting. Now that I have a daughter, I have a 13-year-old daughter, I'm a little more choosy about what I do because I don't like to leave her. So um, the playing field gets a little smaller, but I just try to pick things that are interesting, um, not only for you all to watch, but for me to do. <laughs> and you mentioned your daughter there. I mean, you many years ago, you did the game, you were part of the Game Show Marathon recently, weren't you? And you yes. got to relive part of your past as well in doing that. Yes. What was it like <laughs> then taking your daughter onto the Game Show Marathon and then winning? <laughs> I grew up um, not rich, sort of lower middle class, and so the one thing that we could do for free was to play games. So we played a lot of games, and I became a really good game player. So I have been on, gosh, I won 35000 for my charity on um, The Weakest Link. I won 100000 for my charity on Celebrity Poker Showdown. That was yeah. awesome. I love poker. And then what you're talking about is Game Show Marathon. Yeah. And I won 100000 for At Need Teenage Girls. And on that show, we played old game shows. Like we played The Family Feud and The Price is Right and The Match Game. So Probably. the last show, I got to go on with my family and with my daughter and my husband. And that was a blast. Because I had been on the original Family Feud before I was even a celebrity with my family. That must have been some kind of surreal thing to yes. go back. You won it the first time around, didn't you? The first time around we won it, yeah, and they showed a clip of it, and I had such big 80s hair, it was <laughs> so embarrassing. You must have said it before, don't. Yeah. don't. Do you have the family feud here? We do, yeah. Fa yeah. Uh, family fortunes we have. Again. Oh, okay, so, yeah. Yeah, I did the original one like 1980 with Richard Dawson, and that was, that was old school. Wow. And then, I mean, you t as mentioned there, you do a lot of work for charity. Why yes. do you think it's important that actors and actresses actually do that work and don't just sit there and wait for the money to, give it to go to them? I actually don't think it should just be actors and actresses. I think it makes your life so much, at least for me, fulfilling to do charity work. I just find it so much, so much more fulfilling than even acting. But um, for me, I've been, I've been doing this kind of work since I was a teenager, so that I happened to become an actress just sort of made it more visible. Mm. I think um, actually everybody has a chance to find what you're passionate about and to help in some way. It, it's actually pretty easy. And for you then, with Peggy Hill was something you did 254 episodes <laughs> and ended after 14 seasons. What did it feel like when it finally came to an end for you? It was so sad on so many levels. First of all, it meant that I had to get a real job. <laughs> it meant that I had to take some of the TV jobs that had been offered to me that I could pass up or movies that were out of town that I didn't want to really leave my family because I had King of the Hill. So that yeah. was one thing. Plus, we got very close as actors. Pamela Adlon and Mike Judge and Johnny Hardwick and Stephen Root, who's a brilliant actor, every week for 14 years we were together. Wow. Yeah, so that was really sad. And then also I knew that we, I know actors say this a lot, but I knew that we were really blessed that we had such good scripts and I had such a great part that mm. that wouldn't come along again for a while. So, but I, you can't be too sad when you have a job for 14 years. That no, it's like three hours a week. You just have to be grateful. So I was sad that it was over, but I was, infinitely grateful that I even got to do it for so long. And in terms for you, what, when you look for a partner, other than something that you can do for your daughter, what other things do, is it that you really need to see in a part to make you think, that's what I want for me? Yeah. Um, you know, once in a while, not always, you get to pick something that has a message that, or a story that you're passionate about. Yeah. You know, a lot of times you do, like I did in the 90s, I did big blockbusters, Sister Act and Hocus Pocus that were really weren't about anything, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. Yeah. And, you know, I got to buy a house, so that was great. But I think now um, I'm, you know, writing my own book. I'm writing my own one-woman show. It's, it's narrowing down to things that really move me in particular mm. than just any old, any old job, you Definitely. know. I mean, for you, I mean, you're a multifaceted, talented person. And in doing all these kind of things, you've, you've had a career that's been incredible. 
people coming into the business now are kind of one trick ponies in a sense because they're only making the big some of them are some of them aren't would you say that's important if you want to make it a successful actor or actress you need to have more than one element to what you do I mean, I don't know that I'm really equipped to give advice because I took sort of the road less traveled. I took my own road. Yeah. But when people ask me for advice, um, my, my biggest advice that worked for me was to just take the next step and do what interests you and sort of have blinders up to fear. Yeah. Because this world, especially entertainment business, will tell you why you're too old or too thin or too fat or too ethnic or didn't come to the right place or not enough training all the reasons why you can't do what you want to do, which I guess applies to any job, really. But what I did was just have blinders and just went forward and did what I wanted, and it just happened to work out for me. But I would say fear is your biggest enemy, yours and other people's that try to impose their fear on you. Yeah. So when I speak to schools, I, I'm a keynote speaker and I speak around the country, I just say you have to almost be in denial, Yeah. really, and see what's ahead of you and... and you only have one life. You might as well do what makes you happy. And after doing a character for so long, did you ever have when you were using your normal day-to-day -day life what you would call a Peggy Hill moment? And how did you deal with it? Would you do something that you think, hang on, the character would do that or something like that? Did it ever kind of cross over for yeah. sometimes? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, after being you know, involved in this, uh, in King of the Hill, do you all know what King of the Hill is? It's a, like The yeah. Simpsons? Yeah. For 14 years... I, the lines got very blurred between Peggy and Kathy. Like a lot of times they would write Kathy-ish things for Peggy and a lot of times Kathy would become Peggy. So the lines are very blurred. It's actually a character that I like a lot and that I respect a lot. So I didn't have to play somebody that I hated or didn't, couldn't relate to. Mm. There's a lot about us that's different but a lot about us that's in common. So we've got time for a couple of questions from the audience. And uh, so if you'd like to stick your hand up, I'll come down. Hi, Kathy. Uh, Hi, honey. King of the Hill ran for so many seasons. Do you ever think it would have run as long if it were a live action show? You know, the interesting thing, she asked, um, do I think King of the Hill would have uh, run as long if it were a live action? The interesting thing about King of the Hill is, that unlike The Simpsons and Family Guy, there was no fantasy. Like, the family never went to the moon or had blue hair or traveled through time. It was really, if there is any cartoon that could be live action, it would be King of the Hill because it was a real family on a real street in real time. The only thing is, we never changed our clothes and we never got older. <laughs> <laughs> but I would, I would have loved it to be a sitcom. I'm not a huge fan of sitcoms, but this particular story I really loved. Okay, we've got time for one more question. From this man here, over here. Let's put his hand up. Hi. Um, Hi. How was it to like, work alongside all the cast and crew of Rat Race? Oh, the cast and crew, Rat Race. That was, that was a hard shoot. <laughs> when, I, when they offered me the part in Rat Race, um, they said it was a two-month shoot, and it ended up being six months. So I was quite crabby by the fifth month. But um, I really became good friends with Brecken Meyer, who was in it, and Amy Smart. So thank goodness for Amy and Brecken, because we got to hang out, because we did night shoots a lot, and that was a lot of fun. But why do, are you a fan of Rat Race? People love that movie, boy. It really has a, a heavy cult following. Yeah, but there were moments that were really fun and moments where I just wanted it to be over. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, please give a massive round of applause and a massive Thank you, guys. Thank you. I'm signing my last half hour up against the wall if you want to come over. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Kathy and Jimmy. Well, Thank you, darling.